truth is always found near one's heart. But how can voice be given to what is eternal, vast, luminous? What gets spoken often is not what gets heard. And what remains unsaid customarily goes unnoticed. The noise of life, its doubt, its pace, its fear, takes grip until nothing remains to hold. The very weight of one's presence necessitates further inquiry. How distant we remain from truth when it's so near. How does one touch one's essence? Glimpse one's heart. Express the elusive origins of the soul in the light of day and in the shadows of night. We hold tight to an existence that can only be found in this moment, released in this moment, to this moment, for this moment, only to be rediscovered in the rebirth of this moment. And so it is with great pleasure that today I present the over of Saeed Raza. He is lauded for his late-in-life Bindu paintings, which represented a source of energy. But you will see the early work of Raza's still maintain a constant through line in terms of color, vibrant colors, mood, a constant sentiment is evoked, and memory, a recalling of what was and what was longed for, and a constant fusion between the East and the West. So I invite you to explore the work of Saeed Raza with me today. Let's take a deep breath in, inhale. Release, inhale. Release. Settling in. It's good to be back with you, everyone. I haven't seen you in quite some time. So, you may be wondering if this is your first time here, what exactly is going on here? Well, I want to tell you, it is an entire vibe. We talk about art, we talk about life, we talk about philosophy. So grab your favorite glass of wine. We have some Cabernet Sauvignon tonight, or tea. We have some oolong mixed with, uh, cha um, with chamomile. So we'll pour some of that into our cup tonight, and we'll get started. As we begin to have a little wine, a little tea, and we'll spend some time probing the edges of existence. So, where should we begin? We will begin here with the words of the Russian novelist, Leo Tolstoy writes so succinctly, The sole meaning of life is to serve humanity. The sole meaning of life is to serve humanity. And so my question to you is, what are you in service to in this moment? In the direction that you are moving in, in the purpose that you hold, in that sense of value and mission that propels you forward, are you doing so in service to humanity? 
Let's begin to explore the work of our artist today, Saeed Reza. And so these are the Bindu paintings that Reza is so known for, but his work, his early style, as we often see, did not begin here. It began somewhere much different, but we can see the traces that lead to this point. And so this is the early work of Reza. This is a watercolor on paper painting from 1944 in Bar, uh, in Banars, Banars, in India, where Reza, our artist, is from. And so, in this piece about Reza, you will begin to see how there, even when he's depicting reality. Even when he's depicting the seafront, the waterfront, right there, even then, there's some deconstruction of elements there. It's not exactly precise. It's not exactly a rendering of reality, a realistic rendering of reality. No, no. Even in his early work, he's already painting with this sense of mood, with this sense of tonality, where it's not exactly a photorealistic depiction, but it is trying to evoke something. And it says something in this article that I wanted to point out. He says, in a quote, Since I was living in the city of Bombay, which, served, which seems so very beautiful to me, I also painted Bombay under the sun and under the rain. And so there he is. He says it right there. I painted the city. I painted my home under the sun, under the rain, in the elements, trying to evoke a mood, trying to place you there with him. Not just trying to render what he saw, but trying to instill infuse a sense of humanity, a sense of the comings and goings, a sense of the vibrancy of the people, a vibrancy of the city. It's right there, evoked in this watercolor. Taking a look at another one of his early paintings. 1956, Oil on Canvas. You begin to see, once again, he's still staying true to these somewhat tonal color palettes, but also playing with this idea of shading, right, of negative space. That there is something to be explored in the shadows of life. And so we talked about how memory and mood were some of the two very central thematic elements that we see within Reza's painting, but also this, this idea of color. Right, and you see this idea of color is central to the paintings. Look at this bright, bold streak of yellow, of golden, uh, of the sun, of the, of the sky. He could have left that blue. He could have made it more muted, but no, your eyes is drawn or drawn to that sky. It is emblazed, right? And he said that he painted under the sun. Could this be a sunset? Right. Get the mood that he's trying to evoke, sense that he's trying to bring you into, to invite you into this world. And even in the early piece, you still see large splotches, large brush strokes, where color is just flung onto the campus. Look at that turquoise at the base of the tower. Look at the top of the tower, how your eye is just drawn to it in that vivid clay, um, reddish color. Look at the splashes of people, right, down below, how they are draped in very bold colors. And so we'll see this idea of color come up frequently in the work. And so, 
Well, we often want to turn to the inspirations. The inspirations. And with this sip of wine, we turn to one of Reza's great inspirations, and that is that of his wife. He married his wife in 1956. She was a Parisian. They had wonderful, wonderful exchanges of letters that we now see some love letters. They're absolutely beautiful that we'll explore. But before we go to the letters, we take inspiration, we draw inspiration from the words of the Japanese poet Matsumo Basho. Every day is a journey, and the journey itself is home. Every day is a journey, and the journey itself is home. Let's turn our attention to a home that Reza had, and that is one with his wife, Janie. Can you imagine this? They wrote a love letter. It was entitled, To Sing Your Divinity. Right? To Sing Your Divinity. Can you imagine that? To receive a letter entitled to that. To pin a letter to that. And he writes, Dear Janie, to sing your divinity or that of nature, one must be a poet. Right? To equate the beauty of his wife, the elegance of his wife, to that as something as vast as nature. Right? And he says, even that becomes very difficult to express. You must become a poet. You must have a sense of training because it's so large. It's so expansive. But there was a line in particular that I want to share, and it was a line that Jamie shared with uh, Reza. And it's so important sometimes that we remember this, that if you're able to recall what someone shared with you and you're able to say it back to them, that means that you are listening, that you are paying attention, that you treasured the words. And he says this, he ended the letter where he opened it with, I, I'm singing your divinity, right? I'm lofting you up. I'm saying, for me, you are the center. He says this, he says, I repeat for you what you wrote to me. You must penetrate the center of your gravity, of your silence. It must be to find what you need. And some of you out there today, that advice, those words probably resonate because you too must penetrate the center of your gravity. Right To go to your very core, to find that sense of stillness in the silence. Right, All the noise of life, all the distractions of life, all the chaos of life. Right here, Janie cuts through it all and says, find your inspiration at the center of your gravity. Find your inspiration right there in the silence. It says, you must find what you need that this is your life's work, that this is what you were meant to do. You must find it. Right? Isn't that something that's so encouraging right there? That someone who's your life partner, someone who you decided to enmesh life with, says that you must do what you were born to do. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful letter. That was from Reza to Janie in 1953. Moving on. 
Before we do, we'll take inspiration from Audre Lorde, who writes, When you dare to be powerful, when I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I am afraid. When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I am afraid. And just as Janie told to Reza and Reza repeated back to Janie that you must find and penetrate your center of gravity, of your silence. It must be to find what you need. And right here, Lord is saying that she's endeavoring towards her power. And in that strength, she finds the ability to overcome the fear, the adversity that stands in the way. Going back to Reza's painting, the Bindu style that he is so known for, that he is so lauded for, we begin to explore, taking a look at what we see, taking a deep breath in first. Inhale, release. Taking a look, what do you notice? Perhaps we start with the colors, since we said Reza's work is noted for its colors. Bold spaces of blue, bold spaces of red, and once again he includes black in it, he includes the shadow in it, and he includes the silence in it, he includes the mystery in it, he includes what remains ineffable in it, he includes what cannot be said within the painting. There is so much that can be said within the negative space that we often overlook, that we often want to avoid. But Reza, in this painting, makes it clear that you cannot avoid what has not been said, that it is with you, it is a part of you, it runs through you. And it includes some very vivid shapes in this painting, right? We see squares, we see circles, we see triangles, we see this tessellation of pattern, we see lines, we see shapes within shapes contained within shapes that make up shapes. There's so much that can be dissected in this. There's so much beauty in this poetry of shape and form and line and color. It's almost as if it's a patchwork quilt. It's a patchwork of memories. It's a patchwork of moods. It's his transactional line between Bombay and Paris in the 50s. Between the love of home and the love of his wife. Janie died in 2001 after being married in 1956. That was quite a long time. Reza died well into his mid-90s. That was quite a life. And he kept painting. He kept producing work. He kept allowing the memories of what took place to be infused into the paintings, into the work. And we see often in Reza's work this idea of the memory, of the space, of the mood, of the pattern, of the tone, that this is like life. Sometimes you have to penetrate the center of your gravity. Find what you need out of life. Moving on, and we find a little more inspiration from the words of Descartes who writes, if you would 
be a real seeker after truth, it is necessary that at least once in your life you doubt as far as possible all things. If you would be a real seeker after truth, it is necessary that at least once in your life you doubt as far as possible all things. And so here we have Reza in his studio in Paris, his atelier in Paris in the 1960s working on his paintings. And it was only later in his life that he distilled his ethos of his painting and the seminal works into the bindu and you can kind of see it in the background here once more we remember the watercolor waterfront his early work he deconstructs it even more he takes it apart even more he tries to create a mood even more he tries to create a sentiment even more and we take a look at some of reza's work taking a look at the shapes and the colors. This right here is a village in Fet, 1964. Once again, we see the patterns, the repetition of colors. We can kind of see the countryside in the background. All right, you can kind of see what appears to be trees, or maybe people, but you can definitely see the hills in the back. And the further Reza went into his career, the more he moved into the abstract expressionist movement. We began to see that inter intersectionality there. It was a part of the uh, avant-garde group in India at the time, the progressive arts movement. Once again, that fusion of East and West. There was a quote that kind of described Reza's work that I thought was very telling, very, very telling. And let me pull it up. But it's... Ah, where did it go? Where did it go? Well, it talked about the brush strokes. Let's see. Ah, okay. So here we go. Broadly speaking, and so this is the group of which Reza was a member. Broadly speaking, its adherents advocated combining an avant garde style of favist colors cubist forms and or expressionist brushwork with Indian subject matter. And so we see this, this, this mixture, this potent mixture of a form, of color, of subject, of color, that just creates this, this rich tapestry of work. Look at this, absolutely exquisite work by Reza. La Terre, in French, the earth. The earth, right there. Isn't that a, a very interesting way? If, if you would normally think about the earth and you would say, draw the earth, immediately someone would go and draw a circle. But Reza, no, no. He went and draw horizontal, uh, I mean, he went and draw uh, lines. Lines on an axis, right? He went to draw the axis of the earth. He went to go find the center of the gravity right there. And mixed in could be the oceans. It's an absolutely exquisite piece of work by Reza. Another, we see these very, very vivid reds and greens, and we see the blacks as characteristic within his work. 
Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And so taking a look at just the biographical data. And so born in 1922 in Mandala, he died at age 94, 2016 in New Delhi. He lived and worked in France since 1950, right? 1950. He moved to France, worked in France, met Janie, and um, they lived together for a long time. Uh, some of his seminal works they sold at Christie's. Uh, there are a number of paintings that he has that are selling over a um, million dollars. Um, oh, so no, it was 1959, excuse me, not 1956. He, he married Janie in 1959, and she died in 19, I mean in 2002. So very long, long marriage, life, and career. So I just wanted to share with you today the work of S.H. Reza. Absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning work. And as he said so well, he attempted to paint the city under the sun and under the rain. And so, to you who are endeavoring in your life, perhaps as you try to find your center of gravity, maybe you can go paint your life under the sun and under the rain to infuse it with great rhythm, to infuse it with the poetry and movement of life to find a sense of purpose and balance right there, to see the silence amidst all the noise. Let me tell you, it's been wonderful to have this contemplative art viewing with you, to share the over of Reza with you. Anyway, take care, enjoy yourself. And I will see you next time. Taking a deep breath in, inhale. Releasing, inhale. Releasing. Many deep bowels of gratitude to you all. I'll see you next time. Take care.